Hey, my name's Steve, and if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm happy to share that this one's gonna be a little different. If you're new here, what's up? Thanks for visiting my channel. I hope you're gonna like my style. I've been traveling around Asia for a while now, sharing some vlogs about what it's like here, but this film you're about to watch is a little different because it's part of a travel series that I put a lot of work into with my buddy Patty, who has another channel called The Budgeteers. I'd really appreciate if you watch this video and give me some feedback. I'm looking forward to reading your comments and hearing what you think about it. And if you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button. All right, that's enough from me. Let's roll this intro. Boom! Previously on Welcome to Myanmar. This town's cool, I like it. I like Burma already a lot. Normally border crossing towns are sketchy as fuck, but this guy's been helping us. Yeah, everybody's been extremely helpful. The girls at the currency exchange were super hot. What's up? <laughs> After crossing the border from Thailand, we spent our first couple days exploring the beautiful town of Pa'an. Pa'an or Pa'an? Pa -an. The pronoun is Pa'an, not Pa'an. We visited some incredible pagodas, some creepy caves, and even trekked all the way up to the highest mountain around. Yeah. We made it! <sighs> Our next city was Yangon, where it was a bit more busy. There's a very popular train that circles the city, so we decided to ride it around town and make a fun game out of it. Yangon Train Extreme Food Door 2017 Extravaganza, yeah! <laughs> After spending a few days exploring the busy city of Yangon, it was time to continue our journey and travel up north. But, instead of taking the traditional means of transportation, we decided to spice things up a bit and give it a go at hitchhiking. Where are you going? Uh, Piaggi. Piaggi. Where's that? How far? One hour. One hour? One hour. Oh, we'll keep trying. Thank you. Thank you. Safe journey. Good piece of advice for you if you're hitchhiking and you've got an amazing spot like we have is be fussy because you never know if you go an hour up the road and they drop you off in some dirty dusty side of the street with no shade, no toilet, no food, which we kind of have here. Just be fussy, wait for your ride, wait for your ride. And then if it, after an hour you're still, or two hours or three hours, then you can start being like, fuck it, let's just get out of here. Come on dude! 15 miles? Oh. oh, we're trying to go to Mandalay. Mandalay or Bagan? No, it's too far. All right, okay. you don't want to go to Mandalay this weekend instead. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. All right, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Two stops, five minutes. That's a good sign. Mingle about, mingle about. Mingle about. Oh, boy. Hello, nice car. <laughs> um, we are going north to this area, Mandalay. Mandalay, Mandalay? How far? Are you? I know it's far away, yeah. Are you going there? Yes. You're going here? I go? Okay, I have no idea what you're saying, but I don't think you're going where we're going. Okay. Uh, Alright, never mind. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay. We'll try again next time. Just see Nice car, by the way. You win some, you lose some with hitchhiking. That guy obviously wanted to help us out. Him and his mum in a nice car with air conditioning, beautiful seats. Would have been amazing, but he clearly wasn't going where we were going. So. Back on the road, Steve. We'll try again next time. Think <laughs> about. <laughs> Do you speak English? Yes. Oh, English. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a little. A little. A little. Okay. Uh, where Where do you go to? So Yangon. Yangon. You. Yeah. Pago. 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 Okay. Thirty-nine miles. Thirty-nine miles. It's another town. What do you think? You want to keep uh, stay here? Stay here a little bit stay longer. Here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a bunch of people are stopping, but. 
everybody's only going maybe one or two hours up north and we're trying to go like eight or nine hours up north. But at this rate, the law of averages is definitely in our favor. I say maybe like another 20, 30 minutes out here, we're gonna get someone to go all the way up north. Okay, 10 seconds later, another guy's just stopped. Mika Do you speak English? Never mind. Hey, me out. Where are you going? Yangon. Oh. We wanna go, we wanna go Mandalay. <gasps> He's going halfway, Steve. Uh -huh. Do you mind if we can we come in and go with you up here? Can, can me and Steve in the back have a think about it? <laughs> I'm from I'm from London and New York, England, America, America. and England. And oh. we'll go we'll go up here with you, and then we'll have lunch with you, and go dancing with your mum. He's just thinking about it. She says no. Oh. Okay. okay, never mind. Her mum's smart. She's like, don't pick up these crazy people. I'm sorry. Thank you. Safe journey. Straight away. Something. Now, how about you? Do you have to go to the other side? Yeah. 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 Mingalabar. Mingalabar, what's up? Where do you want to go? Uh, Where are you going? Where do you... I'm Mendeley. Oh, Mandalay. yes. That's what we try to go to Mandalay. Really? Well, we try to go to Bagan, but Mandalay is up north. Uh, do you have room for two beautiful, handsome men? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, we got a ride, guys. Look at these awesome people. Right here, this is Lynn and Bebe. Cool, they're from Yangon, and they're going up to Mandalay to get a puppy. <laughs> Dalmatian. A Dalmatian. Dalmatian. That's and so they're cool. going to get a puppy, but they picked up two dogs on the way. <laughs> <laughs> and we have another friend back here. I can't pronounce her name, but. Moo. Moo? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll just yeah, call you Moo. Mookie. <laughs> Very cool. One kick her out of bed. It was a long journey up north. We drove for eight hours and over 600 kilometers. Our new friends who picked us up dropped us off at the Mandalay bus terminal so we immediately jumped on a local bus through the night on our way to a small town called Bagan. Eventually we arrived at 3am in the morning and so we just called it a night in the first shitty guest house we could find. Welcome to Bagan. This ancient city attracts travelers from all over the world, mainly due to the abundant amount of pagodas, temples, and monasteries. From the 11th to 13th century, over 10,000 of these unique, beautiful structures were built, and over 2,000 of which are still standing today. All right, so we're on top of one of the pagodas, and if you come here, you'll notice that a lot of them are actually gated up. Like they have stairs that come up to the top, uh, but they're gated and we saw a local over there that said they're gated because in 2016 there was an earthquake and some of them got damaged, they're not safe to walk on, so now they gate them up. Uh, but there's still plenty for you to go up and explore. And earthquake test! <laughs> there's a really cool app, it's called maps.me and it allows you to use GPS services with no Wi-Fi, no internet access. And it's also really cool because people can leave pinpoints. So someone marked this one as sunrise spot and there's a bunch of different other ones. It says good viewpoint, you can get to the top or some of them say it's closed, you can't get to the top. So maps.me, helpful app, download that For if you're sure. traveling. Since Bagan is so spread out across this gorgeous Burmese countryside, you'll need to get yourself a ride. But since they don't allow tourists to rent motorbikes, you'll have to get used to the electric bikes that they have instead. It's the weirdest thing ever. Look, watch this. No yeah. sound. <laughs> it just feels so wrong. But it's probably good for the environment, I'd say. Yeah. Saving the planet one motorbike, one, one e-bike at a time. Oh, all right, here we go. We spent the rest of the day driving around in places we probably shouldn't have, 
climbing some more ancient pagodas. <laughs> Steve, I'm too fat to get through. And searching for a better place to stay for the next few days. First of all, check out these amazing robes. Look how good we look in these robes. You know it's a fancy place when they give you robes. It's not that expensive. Yeah, it's really not that expensive here. It's just, a f it was a few dollars more than the crappy hostels down the road. This is the name of the hotel. I can't really pronounce it very well, but. Yen Yabon? What is it? Yadanabon. Hotel Yadanabon. <laughs> it's a difficult one to say. And uh, I mean, if any of you budgeteers have made it over from the first episode, you're probably wondering like, hey, why are you guys not couch surfing? You guys couch surf all the time and you save money that way. We do couch surf and we do enjoy couch surfing. It's one of our favorite things to do. We messaged a few people and they got back to us and everybody said they weren't available um, at this time. There's another guy who's traveling. There's not many hosts here in Yeah, we can find Myanmar. our hosts for ages. So if you are on a different kind of budget, maybe you're not budgeteering and hitchhiking isn't your thing or whatever and you want to spend a bit of money and be comfortable, then this is a really good option. And it's still not that expensive, is it really? Yeah. So let's go show you around. So we're here at our favorite restaurant in Bagan and um, yeah we're going to be going out on our adventure day around the temples today in Bagan and we thought well what a better way to explore than with the traditional tanaka which is the local um, cream, sun cream. You'll see every local woman and some men wearing this and it's made from a local tree. You'll see the actual piece of wood next to a granite slate and they'll rub it with water and then they apply it on their face. And you can also buy kind of like this version, which is the same kind of thing, but in a paste form. Tanaka is good for your skin. It stops the sun. Yes, it makes you look young. And, and, and. Yeah, and acne, it stops you from getting spots. Can you help us? Can you can you um, mix it up for us and make sure we look, you know, really good? Isn't it ready made Tanaka? This is ready, ready made. Yeah, ready made. Just add water. Yeah, add water. All right. It's, oh, it feels really nice. Oh, we're going on the nose. Oh, on the forehead too. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you want to do it on Steve? Yeah. All right. She's pulling out her mom. The expert Tanaka artist is coming over for me. Oh, I don't want to buy my job. I don't want to do my job. I don't want to Oh, she's getting out the the heavy duty machinery over here. Oh my gosh. No chemicals. No chemicals. No chemicals. So, mm. so, what Patty just put on his face is like the overproduced, commercialized Tanaka, but this is the natural stuff, straight on the on the granite. Oh, all right, going right on my face. Dull me up, baby. Mm, it smells so good. She's just giving you a full face job. Oh, it's like a massage. <laughs> very lucky. Very lucky. Very lucky. Very lucky. Ah. We've been here for a couple days now and uh, we haven't eaten at any other restaurant but this one just because we love it so much here. If you come to Bagan, you definitely got to come here. Maybe even get the special spa treatment like me if you ask nicely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, little man. So from the little adventuring we've done already, we've scouted out and there are thousands of these beautiful pagodas. But there are probably about a dozen big giant ones and they all look really different and they all look really interesting. And I've got my eye on one. We've given them all nicknames because they all look so different. And um, we want to go check out one that we've nicknamed Goldie because it's got this big, beautiful gold circular roof. But we're driving around here in the heat and it's hard to find them. So a good way to do it, if you get lost and you want to get your bearings, you just find, pick a random pagoda, make sure you take your shoes off, <laughs> go inside, find the little staircase, go up, and then you'll have a beautiful view and you'll be able to pinpoint where it is and then check on your map and hopefully we'll find where we want to go. Wow. Oh, big things, always. <laughs> the one thing you'll definitely see if you come to any of these pagodas, a lovely gentleman, artist, trying to sell you beautiful paintings. Mm. Very, very nice. See this? This guy's nice. He has, he has them all displayed, but some of them are really sneaky. They try to be your friends. They, they help you. They ask you where you're from. They talk to you, and you know they sit you down after about five, ten minutes of talking. They open up their bag. They take out some paintings, and they just show you, and you're making friends with them, and they just, they're really good salesmen. So they'll get you. They, 
that they got us. <laughs> we ended up buying four of them already. <laughs> five is lucky number. <laughs> See? Good salesman right here. Five is lucky number. He took all my money. I have no number. No. Yeah. Don't worry, a lot of people who watch this will come and buy some. No yeah. What's your name? Uh, Tom. Tom? Yes. Yeah. Alright, come buy some from Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I think we found one we can actually walk up. A little out of breath, we just ran all the way up here because we got excited because we actually made it on top of this one. Yeah. We got a nice view, we can see a lot, and we see Goldie. We see Goldie. We want to get to Goldie. She's a little far away, but with uh, some determination, persistence, and probably getting lost another five times, I think <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, I think we'll find her. So you will get lost in Bagan, you will end up in the middle of nowhere, and you'll have fun doing it. Yeah, it's all part of the fun. But eventually, there's only certain, and there's only certain amount of like country road before you will just end up getting to a road you cannot go. Look at this. This is definitely the end of the road. We can see just like beyond these trees where we want to go, don't we? Like we can see the big ones. But look, we just sort of happily were just driving down this country lane, and they snap these branches and they put them in front of you and we're like well just go around them and eventually you find out why they don't want you to come down here because it's all it's like farmland that they're going to be using or whatever i don't know all right let's turn around do it again little path right here this is a, this is a road in began <laughs> this is a highway <laughs> there's nothing more fun than just like getting on getting on a bike going driving through the middle of nowhere not seeing anyone around. Beautiful surroundings in the gorgeous weather. I don't know what's going to happen up here. Okay, this is a fucking. Oh, Somebody persisted here, look. <laughs> it looks like someone really tried to get through. They were like, we're going. <laughs> look. Oh, there's more people over there having the same problem. Oh, they're coming this way. No, don't come this way. Don't come this way. No. We've attracted more idiots. <laughs> they're they following our idiot trail. Up she goes. All right. Woohoo! All right. So, I don't know if you can see, but right over there is Goldie. We found Goldie. We're but nearly there. Goldie, we're coming for you. We're coming for you, girl. You dirty girl. <laughs> <laughs> Update: We're currently on the back side of Goldie. I was told she likes it from the rear, but maybe she's maybe got her. Not so. Maybe we can just jump this wall. Goldie! It looks like we're not actually allowed to go in there, maybe because of construction, but we're right next to it on this other pagoda thing. And you get a beautiful view of it, so yeah, just as good. Don't forget guys, when you're traveling, you might find yourself at beautiful places and you get obsessed with taking photos or videos, for example. Don't forget to turn everything off and suck it in, breathe it in. <laughs> <laughs> even though we spent the whole day searching for Goldie and didn't even make it inside, it was all worth it in the end since we found an awesome spot to enjoy this incredible sunset. The day was coming to an end, so we rode back into town and stumbled upon the local outdoor theater where the entire village gathers together to watch. Not long after being here, we made friends with some locals who invited us backstage to check out how they make music for the show. What's your favorite thing about Myanmar? The people. The people are really positive. My favorite thing about Myanmar is definitely the people. The people? It's definitely the people. Once you leave a tourist area, people just give you stuff. They help you. They want to help you so much. They're really positive and really happy. They always are smiling. They're so caring, willing to help you, and that's it. People, definitely. 
they are very caring. They are always um, worry about you, um, asking you if they can help you with anything. They just stop in the street and ask you about it. I think I've never met people in a very untouristy country like this, which have been that friendly, but are never asking for money. So I think this is the m there's many good things about Myanmar, but this is definitely the best for me. Coming up on Welcome to Myanmar. We woke up at 3 a.m. with really? plenty of time to spare. We wanted to catch this 4 a.m. train. We heard online it was the train journey from hell. So, so of course we want to try that out. Exactly. <laughs> After leaving Bagan, we take a 12-hour train ride up north from the city of Mandalay to a small town called Sipa. Hey, hey, we made it to Sipa! Yeah, we did. For our last adventure, we start a three-day trek through the dense jungles and mountainous countryside of northern Myanmar. So we've escaped from the other crowd. We ditched the hot chicks. Yeah. Now we get to be our real selves. <laughs> Who wants to look at a beautiful ass the whole time? We can look at Steve. Yeah. Can we skate down this stick. Oh yeah, yeah that's <laughs> the way you do it. <laughs> Steve, watch out. It's dangerous. <laughs> 